Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing some tutorials with you guys. I have two tutorials. I have one for a chunky journal and one for a notebook. So I've split them into two. This one's for the chunky journal. And if you'd like to watch the notebook one, I'll leave a link to that down below. So all you're gonna need is some cardboard boxes for your cover. I just like to find what I have around the house. So cereal boxes are perfect. For this particular journal, I'm going to use this LCM bar box. And you want to choose something that's going to have a spine already. So, so as you'll see, when I cut off the excess pieces around the edge of the box, when you open it up, you are left with a piece that already resembles the shape of a book or a journal. You've got a front cover, a back cover, and a spine. So that just makes it really simple for us to start building upon that base because we don't really need to do any measuring or anything like that. And you can use any size box that you have. It doesn't have to be the same size as mine. Once you've cut it down, you're gonna to wanna to choose your focal image for the cover. So this can be paper, it can be fabric, it can be a photo, anything that you have that you wanna use. For this journal, I'm using fabric, but you can use whatever you have. It doesn't have to be fabric. So I just cut it down to fit roughly on the front cover. And then I used a lid to give me a rough circle shape. I didn't draw right around the lid. I left a little bit of a gap because we're going to need that little extra gap to create a perfect circle later. So once you've cut that into a rough circle shape, you're going to want to glue it down on the front cover. And I'm just using some wet glue to attach this to the front cover. And because my fabric's quite thick, I'm also just applying a little bit of glue around the edges of the fabric just to make sure that it's stuck down really, really well. But if you use paper or something like that, you probably won't need to do that. Now I'm just taking some texture paste and this is what we're gonna to use to sort of blend this into the cover and give us a bit of vintage look and texture to the cover. So I'm using that lid to protect the image and that's also gonna give me a perfect circular shape. So it's gonna be like a bit of a stencil that's gonna protect that flower and then I can bring the texture paste all the way up to the lid which will give me a nice round shape around the image. And because my fabric's quite thick, I ended up doing two layers of texture paste just to make sure that the edges of the fabric were blended in really well. But if you use something thinner or a photo or something, you probably can do with just one layer of texture paste. So once I was happy with that front cover, I also applied some texture paste on the back cover and a little bit on the spine as well so that everything um, flows together and so everything is just blended together really nicely. And you want to set this aside to dry completely. I let mine dry overnight. And as you can see, because my fabric's so thick, I need to apply a little bit more texture paste around the edges of that fabric. I'm just concentrating some more texture paste around the edges where the fabric ends, just to blend that in really, really well. And there you can see that looks much better and I've let that dry completely and now I can start painting over the top. So you can paint your journal whatever color you like. I've just mixed up this brown color. I want my journal to look really vintage but you can of course choose whatever color you like and just paint that all over the top of the texture paste, all over the cover and we're going to of course avoid that circular image that we put on the front cover. If you're confident and comfortable, you can definitely paint this freehand, but I pulled out that same lid that I used before, and I'm gonna use that again, sort of just to protect that image and make sure that I keep it nice and neat. So painting all over and bringing the paint all the way up to the edge of the lid so that it, it covers up all of that texture paste that we did before. When I took my lid away, there was a couple of little gaps and areas that didn't look quite perfect or a couple of little bits of texture paste that I had missed. So I just went in with a small brush and just neatened it up a little bit until I was happy with how it looked. And now we're just gonna let that dry completely. And now it's time to cover up the inside because at the moment the inside of our cover still has all that branding. So I'm taking one piece of scrapbook paper and as you can see, it didn't fit the whole way across. So I need to cut this down and make it fit in pieces. So to do that, I cut it down in half down the middle and instead of cutting it down to the perfect size to fit, I'm going to leave some excess paper. I've left some excess paper along the bottom 
so that there's less room for error because I can push that paper all the way up to the very, very edges of the box or the journal cover and then I can trim off the excess and that way there's not going to be any tiny little gaps where I've just misjudged when I've cut it. So I think that's a good idea to give you a more perfect finish. And of course, if your scrapbook paper fits the entire way across the cover, you can do this in one piece, but because mine was too large, I am doing this in a couple of different pieces. So I flipped it over, trimmed off the excess paper, and now I'm gonna use one of those little scrap pieces to cover up the middle part, which is the spine of the journal. And I just cut this down roughly to the same width of the spine, and then I'm just eyeballing it, putting it onto the journal and trimming down any more of it that I need to so that's going to fit really really well on that spine piece and cover up that center. Once our pages are bound into the book you're not really going to be able to see the spine so much so it doesn't matter that this doesn't match up perfectly with the front and back um, with the front and back paper lining. And there's our cover. Now for my journal I'm just taking some regular plain white copy paper and I'm going to tea dye it or coffee dye it. You can use whatever you have. I'm taking actually a mixture of both and put it into a dish with some boiling water and then let it steep a little bit. And then I'm just gonna dunk my paper into this dye. And so I'm just gonna fold it over a little bit so that it fits into the dish that I'm using and just dunk it in. And what I'm gonna do this time, I'm not gonna dip the paper in and then take it straight out. I'm actually going to dip it in and I'm going to leave it in and then I'm just going to stack the rest of my papers on top. And then what I did was I just let the paper sit in that mix for a couple of hours and then I tipped out the excess mixture and then I dried them in the oven. So that gave me a really nice deep vintage looking color. Once my papers were dry, I'm going to fold them in half perfectly. They are already a little bit folded in half because of the way that I tea dyed them, but I want to make sure they're nice and neat. So fold all of them in half. And for my journal, I'm using 20 sheets of copy paper and I'm going to have four signatures with five pages in each. So a signature is a group of pages within your journal. And we'll get to that when we do the binding. First, we need to just trim down the papers so they're going to fit inside our cover. And I'm just using a ruler to do this. So just placing my paper next to my journal and then, and then using my eye to measure how much I need to tear off. And now it's time to do our binding. So, so what you wanna do is you wanna find the center of your spine horizontally. So I just measured that and then drew a line with my ruler. You're also going to want to grab some paper clips because we're going to start creating our signatures. So like I said, a signature is a group of pages inside your journal. So I'm making four groups of five pages and I'm just placing the pages on top of each other with the seams meeting. And then once I have five in a stack, I'm adding a couple of paper clips to hold these together while we're binding the book. Now that we have our groups of pages, we can start binding them in. And this is just a really simple binding method that I've come up with that I hope isn't going to be too scary for you. So what you want to do is you want to work out how many signatures you have. I have four. So I'm going to draw four dots on that line we drew before, and that's going to be where I'm going to stitch. And this is only going to be a one hole binding. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my first group of pages and I'm holding it inside the cover, making sure it's not overhanging either end. And then with my needle, that's already been threaded. I'm going to thread through the center of those pages and through the first dot uh, or the first hole. And then I'm going to wrap that string all the way around the book, all the way around the pages and the cover together. And then we're going to go back through that same hole that we went through before and we're going to tie it off. So hopefully that's not too confusing. I've added a little diagram up the top right of the screen as well. So if you follow the arrows, that'll show you the direction your thread should go. And I'm going to show you this a couple of times so you can see how I'm doing it on screen as well. So through the middle of your pages, through the hole from the inside of the cover. Then you want to go up and wrap it all the way around until you're back on the outside of the cover. 
go back through the same hole and then you're going to pull those strings tight and you're going to tie them off. I like to do a double knot and then just trim off the excess thread. So this is kind of like an easy twine binding where you take some string or some rubber bands or whatever and you just wrap it around your book. But it's a little bit more secure because it has that one hole. It's going to really anchor those signatures in the right position and they're not going to be able to slip and slide or come out of the book in any way. So it's like one step stronger than an easy twine binding. And I promise you this is so, so easy when you're actually doing it. It's so quick. It's so much quicker than binding normally and it's really really easy because you don't really have to measure anything up other than that center line and that's going to ensure that all of your holes are evenly placed and everything's going to look really perfect <laughs> So once you're done, you can take out all of those paper clips and there your book is bound. I promise you guys, this is such an easy binding method and it turned out really good, even better than I expected it to. So I really like how it turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this little chunky journal tutorial. If you want to check out the notebook tutorial that's in a similar style to this, I'll leave a link down below. I've filmed these together at the same time, but I've split them into two videos just because the video was going to be super long. So make sure you check out the notebook tutorial too. If you do make one and you share a photo of it, make sure to tag me so that I can see what you guys make. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.